Hi. Happy Thursday. I guess I should stop saying that because what if you aren't watching this on a Thursday, which is totally fine. I just record them on Thursday, so maybe I just need to say hello. Thanks for watching. Welcome. <laughs> Something like that. Um, today I thought I would talk about first pages, first chapters, um, that kind of thing. Beginnings, basically. It's so interesting. People have a lot of strong opinions about beginnings. And uh, I guess I'll tell you what I think, in case you want to know. Uh, the interesting thing is that every book, I don't really think about any of that. I always just, you know, one time I remember my mom asked me, like, how do you start? You get an idea, which we talked about last week. So if you just about um, using memories in your writing and coming up with ideas and that kind of thing. So go look for that if you haven't watched it. But I remember one time my mom, you know, was just, you get an idea and then it's time to start writing. Like, how do you start? <laughs> I thought it was just, it's not an easy question to answer. Like, I don't even know what I said. Um, you just start. Like, you just go, okay, well, my main character is this person. And, you know, you just find a spot where you think it makes sense for the story to begin. And you, be, you start writing and maybe it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it and so you start again and um i think for me beginnings are usually easier than other parts um i don't usually know how a book is going to end when i start to be honest i know other authors are like i can't start writing unless i know how the book's going to end and i'm like wow i rarely know how the book's going to end <laughs> I just usually have an idea and a story I want to explore. And for me, part of the fun is kind of finding out where the story is going to take me. Um, so anyway, that just shows you that, you know, everybody's different. There's no right or wrong way. But um, so some people think that you should start with a lot of action and get re people really like, you know, on the edge of their seat right away. The difficult part about that is people want to know who the main character is and why they should be rooting for them and it's sort of like once you make your reader um, you know invested in your main character's story that's what keeps them turning the page so a lot of action at first without sort of knowing why they sh should care is difficult to pull off and so that's really I, I always think that you want to have a beginning that ha asks kind of creates some questions that makes them makes the reader want to find the answers that's really what it comes down to is giving some information so there's a there's a start to a story but leaving questions that makes them want to keep reading to find out you know, the answers and so forth. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Kate D. Camillo, and this is The Magician's Elephant. And I just think this is so beautifully written. I, I love this book. Um, let's read just the first page or so. Chapter one. At the end of the century before last in the market square of the city of Baltese, there stood a boy with a hat on his head and a coin in his hand. The boy's name was Peter Augustus Duchesne, and the coin that he held did not belong to him, but was instead the property of his guardian, an old soldier named Vilna Lutz, who had sent the boy to the market for fish and bread. So, first of all, he has a coin in his hand. And we go, hmm, he has a coin in his hand. Why? And I love that she didn't say why right away. That's a little, that's what I was talking about where you, she's introduced the main character. She's told him, a t told us a tiny bit about him, but she's left a question for us. He has a coin. What, what does that mean? 
Here's um, Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson. This one, uh, chapter one, Jesse Oliver Aarons Jr. Baroom, baroom, baroom. Bear a pity, bear a pity, bear a pity, bear a pity. Good. His dad had the pickup going. He could get up now. Jess slid out of bed and into his overalls. He didn't worry about his shirt because once he began running, he would be hot as popping grease, even if the morning air was chill, or shoes because the bottoms of his feet were by now as tough as his worn-out speakers. Where are you going, Jess? Maybell lifted herself up sleepily from the double bed where she and Joyce Ann slept. Shh, he warned. The, th the walls were thin. Mama would be mad as flies in a fruit jar if they woke her up this time of day. So what I love about that is, why doesn't he want... Why does he wait till he hears the pickup going? Why is he trying to be quiet? Why doesn't he want people to know? So see, it's sort of creating these little questions that I think is so good for you to do. See You on a Starry Night is by me. Let's read this one real quick. One, new home. Casper, my old white kitty, sat perched on my nightstand, studying me like I might unpack a can of tuna any second. Poor cat, no tuna here. Just all the moving boxes marked Juliet. I'm sorry, sweet boy, but you have to move. I picked him up and kissed the top of his head before placing him on my green and purple striped quilt. I only had a couple of boxes left to unpack. I'd already made my bed, unpacked my books and put them in the bookcase and filled the dressers, the drawers of my dresser and desk. Now I reached into the box that held pictures and posters, posters and pulled out a framed family photo taken at my 11th birthday party last August. As I put the photo down in its spot right next to my bed, I studied it and felt a pinch in my chest. Mom, Dad, my older sister Miranda and I all wore pointy red and blue hats and had party horns in our mouths. So a couple questions here. She's moved. Why? Where? Right? You kind of wonder that. When she looks at a family photo, she has a pinch in her chest. How come? What's happened? So you want to hook the reader, but also have questions come up so that your reader wants to keep reading. That is what you want to do in the first couple pages, even the first chapter, giving enough to keep them interested, keep them reading, um, but ask questions so that they want to continue on beyond that first chapter. So that's a little bit about beginnings. Make your reader care about your character as soon as possible, I think. All right. Thanks so much. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll talk to you next time.